One of the things I often tell you guys is that I only use free and open source software to create my content for my YouTube channel. And one of the questions I get the most is, what do I use to create the channel's artwork? What do I use to create the channel header? What do I use to create my YouTube thumbnails? And the program I use to create my thumbnails and all the artwork on the channel is GIMP. GIMP stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. And it is our free and open source alternative to something like Adobe Photoshop. So let me show you how I make my YouTube thumbnails in GIMP. So let me switch over to my desktop here. This is my web browser. I've opened up my YouTube channel just to show you some of my thumbnails here in the browser. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial on best practices as far as YouTube, but generally for your thumbnails, you do want to be kind of consistent. That way, for branding purposes, people see your thumbnail and they instantly recognize it's you. So you want to be kind of consistent as far as the fonts you use, the colors you use, the logos you use. But even using those consistent styles, there is, of course, some variation amongst the thumbnails, the different types of thumbnails I use. Some of the thumbnails have pictures of me in them. Some of them have just screenshots of like the distro I was reviewing. And some of them just have random stock photos I found on the Internet. Some of them were just entirely created by me, such as this latest one, the one about CH on and CH mod. I just created a plain black background and created the RWX, RWR dash dash you know kind of like your file permissions when you do an ls in the terminal very simple not complicated at all but today i wanted to do one of the most common styles of thumbnails you see on the internet which is basically a picture of you and a text headline so that is what we're going to do today in gimp so let me pull up gimp so I have opened GIMP, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this picture here. So I took this picture with my camera, and this is going to serve as a foundation for the thumbnail we're about to create. It's just a picture of me, you know, with this weird looking smile and with my weird seersucker blue shirt. And I'm pointing at something. I don't know what I'm pointing at. It's your typical YouTube thumbnail. Now, I could just add some text to this, slap the DT logo on it, and be done, but that wouldn't be very professional looking. For example, is this the kind of professional quality YouTube thumbnail you typically see? No, because for one thing, you see a bunch of extra crap in this picture that you normally wouldn't see in a quality YouTube thumbnail. You see wires running to my microphone and to the lighting, and then you see wires running from my laptop here. You see a lot of cables. Um, you see the curtain here in the background. It's just got a lot of stuff on the desk. Even the desk itself, it's a black glass, mirrored glass desktop. It's got some dust on it, right? Let's clean this up. And one of the Easiest ways to clean up an image like this is to just cut out all of the unnecessary items in this picture. So what we need to do is we need to get one of the select tools. Now the very first three tools here in the toolbar, you see the square, the circle, and then the lasso. These are the select tools. You can select something and you can get rid of it. If I, you know, wanted to cut something out of that, I didn't want to do that. But, you know, that's a select tool. The circle does the same thing, except it's a circle shape. But the lasso is the most interesting one because this is freeform. We can do whatever we want to. Just hold it down with the left mouse and you can, you know, draw something, hit enter, and, you know, you can select something. Now, obviously, that's not what I wanted to do, but you get the idea. So if I select the select tool, the lasso shaped one, what I could do is I could draw all the way around me and my triple screen monitor, and I could cut out everything else from this photograph. And I think that would make a really nice foundation to this thumbnail we're about to create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So I'm going to start right here at the monitors because they're mostly straight lines. That will be the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to draw from here to here and then go back down to this monitor because there's a slight drop off. Then go here to here. And I'm just going to keep drawing around the monitors here. Keep selecting. And then my arm here is actually a pretty good straight line. So I, this is actually a pretty easy 
photograph actually to do the select and my arm here is for the most part straight I want to try to get as close to this shirt as possible because I don't want any of the brown from that bookcase behind me to bleed through and then I'm back on the monitors which again straight edges this is actually pretty easy to do now where it it gets a little tricky will be around my ears and head because now we're talking about curved shapes so I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna zoom in how about let's zoom in 200% here I'm gonna scale up and I'm just gonna draw around the ear and try to be careful with my mouse as best I can once I get toward the top of the head we've got a little more straight lines you know I just click as I go try to get it as close as possible. Now that curtain behind me is a dark navy color. It's close to black. That's fine. And then once I have selected what I wanted to select, let me zoom back out so you can see. Now I could just control X for a cut and I could cut everything that I just selected and that would be fine. If I wanted to do that, I could just go up here and paste as new image and I've got me there. Now what I would rather do actually is go back and undo that. A really neat thing I could do is just go up here to the menu and choose select and then choose invert. And now instead of choosing me and the monitors the select tool is choosing the inverse. It is choosing everything besides me and the monitors. And that's pretty cool. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the color tool and change that to black, change that to black, and then I'm going to choose this here, which is the gradient tool, even though I'm not making a gradient, I'm just using the same two colors, black. And if I choose right here and hit enter, now that is kind of a neat thumbnail right there already. That's a pretty good base of a thumbnail. Just me and my monitors and we do have a little extra background around the monitors here. I got a little bit of the beige color walls that were behind these monitors, but that is easy enough to clean up. So what I would do here is I would zoom in just a little bit here and I could go to the select tools at the top and choose the appropriate one. Now this is pretty much a straight edge on the top of that monitor. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. And I'm going to choose that area right there as best I can till I've got all of the area I need to fill in. And then I could do the gradient tool again and just fill that in with black. Now that looks a little strange. So let me undo that. I'm going to control Z and undo that. I think I'm going to choose the lasso uh, tool again, that particular select tool and try to get around this as much as possible. Yes and hit enter and it'll select it. Now I go back to the gradient tool and I bet this looks a little better. Yeah, that's not too bad. Still a little bit of that beige color bleeding through, but once we scale this down like a normal thumbnail, no one will notice that beige. All right, I'm going to zoom back in and do the same thing for the other side of the monitors here. So we got a little bit of that yellowish beige color bleeding through right here. Just going to get the top of this as best I can, hit enter, and then we'll just use the gradient tool again. And there we go. If I zoom back out, I think I like the look of that. By the way, the dimensions for this thumbnail, I didn't mention it. It's 1280 by 720 is what we're doing here. A standard size for YouTube thumbnails. Now one of the tricks with thumbnails is, you know, your main focal item, whether it's a picture of yourself or a picture of a funny looking animal or whatever it is, you want it to pop. You want it to draw the viewer's attention. So in this case, myself, of course, is the main thing in this image. And to really make myself kind of jump out at you, what we need to do is add a little saturation to the color of, of myself here. So what I would do is I would go to the colors menu here. And I would go to the Hue Saturation tool, and then let me drag this off to the side so you can see the changes as they're being made. I would increase the saturation a little bit, and you see I'm becoming a little more saturated. You know, it's got a little more pop to the image, and your, your eyes are much more likely to be drawn to my thumbnail because of the image being a little oversaturated. It's kind of a trick. It's kind of a trick to draw the viewer to my thumbnail rather than somebody else's thumbnail that may be presented in the YouTube search results. 
Now, the one thing I don't quite like about this picture is the monitors in the background that are running C Matrix. They're a little bright compared to everything else. You know, they're a little bright and almost washed out too in color. I wonder if I can change that. So I'm going to choose the lasso select tool again, and I'm just going to quickly click around the corners here and select the inside of this far left monitor here and see if I can get that. Okay, so I've selected that. Now let's play around with that hue saturation tool again. This time I'm going to drag it over here so we can see what it does to this monitor. So I can tell you one thing I don't like is it's a little too bright. So if I change the lightness, so if I make it a little darker, uh, not that dark, I like that. If I change the saturation, maybe make it even more saturated, yeah, that's kind of interesting. If I do less saturation, uh, it becomes gray, kind of washed out. I don't know. I'll add a little bit of saturation. If I wanted to play with the hue, which is the coloration, you know, I, that would be really freaky looking. I'm probably not going to play with the hue. I think I'm just going to stick with that. I'm going to click OK. And you know what? I'm going to do that for the other two monitors. So I'm going to choose the select tool again, and I'm just going to try to get everything in this monitor. And once I've selected everything in this monitor, I go back to the color menu. I'm going to choose the hue saturation tool one more time. And this time, since I want to do the exact same thing as I did before, I'm going to go to the presets. And it remembers the last time I used this tool. Choose the very last thing, and it remembers what I did to this monitor. Hit OK, and it does it to that middle monitor. And then once again, I'm going to choose the select tool and do it to this last monitor. So now let's add some text. Uh, the first thing I want to do before I add text is I want to create another layer on top of the layer we're currently working in because I'm going to manipulate this text in some pretty crazy ways maybe and I, it would just be easier if the text is in its own separate layer. So go to the top menu, choose layer, and I'm going to choose new layer and I'm going to click OK. If you wanted to, you could name the layer, name it something like text, but that's fine. I'm going to remember what layer I'm in. I'm only dealing with two layers. The first layer, which is me and the monitors, and the second layer, which is the text. Then I'm going to choose the text tool, which is the letter A here in the menu. Choose that. Now, ultimately, what font and what colors you choose will be up to you. But again, for branding purposes, you want to stick to the same fonts you always use, the same colors you always use. For my thumbnails, I typically stick with impact condensed for the font and mostly white black and purple for the colors so i'm going to choose a font size at 1280 by 720 i want it to be a pretty big font size because the bigger the font the more likely people's eyes are going to be drawn to your thumbnail your thumbnail is going to stand out amongst the crowd so a big font size for 1280 by 720 would be uh, probably 120 pixels. I'm going to choose that and then I'm just going to click and then start typing my text. I will type making and then I'll enter thumbnails, enter in GIMP. We'll just do three lines and then I'm going to left click outside of that area and I like that size. If I wanted to, I could make it a little bigger. I could click back into the text box and, you know, use the arrows here to adjust the size and make it 124, 128. Let's make it 130. I like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a control X. I'm going to control X, which is, of course, cut. Then I'm going to go up to the edit menu here. And in the edit menu, you have paste as. I'm going to paste as new image. And now I have that text as a separate image, just in case I need it later, and I will for what I'm about to do. Then I'm going to go back to my image here, and I'm going to control V to paste the text back here as well. But I'm about to get rid of this text. That's why I needed to paste it as its own image, is because I'm about to get rid of these words here. I'm going to choose the rectangular select tool, and then I'm going to draw a rectangle with a little bit of padding around the word making. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this in with a dark color. Typically, I do black for the first word, but because the background is black, nobody's going to see black against black. So I'm going to do it a, a dark gray, just enough gray that people can tell the difference. So the color is 262626. So I'll do that color and we'll do the same here, 262626 for the color. And then I'm going to choose the gradient select tool. 
And then I'm just going to draw right there. And that box there, I kind of like the look of that. I, I think that stands out just enough. It's just a little different than the black where you can kind of tell that there's a box there. Then I'm going to draw a box around the word thumbnails with just a little bit of padding around it. And this box, I am going to make white. Go to the color tool, choose white. Then I'm going to choose the gradient tool just to draw that in for white. And then the final box I'm going to draw is around the words in GIMP. So I'm going to create a box around that and this will be a purple box. The purple I typically use for my thumbnails is 950084. I just happen to know that. I've actually got it saved to the palette here too if I forgot for some reason. And then I go back to the gradient tool and I draw that box. And these are the backgrounds to my words. I also don't like how separated the words are so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rectangular select tool again and just draw around the white box I'm going to control X to cut control V to paste and now I can drag it wherever I want I'm going to drag it a little closer to this first box then I'm going to do the same thing to the purple box control X to cut it control V to paste it but it's floating where I can just drag it wherever I want to now and now they're pretty close together now I'm going to go back to the text image that we created earlier that's just got the text. And I'm going to select Making. So I'm going to do the Rectangular Select tool. I'm going to Control c to copy. Then I'm going to go back to this image and Control v to paste. And drag the word Making right here. And I like the white color for the text. I'm okay with that. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to select Thumbnails. Control c to copy, and then go back, Control v to paste. Now, obviously, I can't have this text be white because I need some contrast. So I already have the purple selected in the color tool from earlier. I'm just going to go with purple for the font color there. Then we go and grab the next two words in GIMP. Control c to copy, Control v to paste. And once again, the white text works perfectly. I'm good with that. If I wanted to move the text around a little more, remember everything we did other than the picture of me and the monitors is its own separate layer. So if I control X right now, I just cut that layer. Control V, paste that layer. But now I could drag that layer anywhere I want to put these words. You know what, I'll probably put it right there. I'm good with that. And the last thing I want to do is somewhere in my saved images, I have my logo. You guys have seen the DT logo a million times. I have it saved. Copy, paste. I'll put the DT logo right there. How does that look for a thumbnail? All I have to do now is save the image. If I want to, I can go in here and export it, you know, as a JPEG or a ping or whatever it is you want to save to. And there you have it. So now when I upload this video later in YouTube, YouTube is going to ask, do I want to upload my own thumbnail? I'm going to upload this thumbnail for that video. So that's just a very brief video on how I use the GIMP to make my YouTube thumbnails. I think a lot of people just assume that you have to use the big proprietary suites of software like the Adobe Suite to make good content for something like YouTube. That is not the case. There is a ton of great free and open source software. In some cases, I think the free and open source alternatives are better than those proprietary programs most people use. Before I go, I need to thank a few special people. This show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Stallman, Donnie, Dylan, George, Hapo, Nate, Corbinian, Lambda, Liam, Mitchell, Natek, Rob, Robert, Sean, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. Without them, this episode about how to make YouTube thumbnails in GIMP would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen that help support my work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.